What's going on guys, it's Rob from Heroes Avenue. Happy Monday, hope you guys are all doing well. I apologize if I look like I just woke up, I just got done working out and teaching a class. So I'm on my lunch break and I wanted to talk about the phase four MCU slate. The video just released this morning and I gotta be honest with you guys, I loved it. I'm really excited for the future of the MCU. But I wanted to talk about it from a different perspective today as I'm sure you've already seen a lot of breakdowns on all of the announcements today. I will talk about it and I will probably play the teaser right here uh, in the background as I do talk about this. I wanted to talk about it from the perspective of a DCEU fan because there's been a lot of mm, infighting between the fandom and fandom, I keep saying fandom. There's been a lot of infighting between the fandom and how to go about preceding uh, the Snyderverse uh, or how to go about trying to restore the Snyderverse, but at the same time, how do you go about supporting the DC properties, especially when Warner Brothers is adding fuel to the fire, it seems, uh, at every chance they have. Uh, and I mean the fire between the, 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 the fans and the studio. So let's go ahead and first talk about what got announced this morning, because it's really exciting. So I'm just gonna have it play in the background here so I can kind of comment on it. So it's playing in the background. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. This uh, teaser kind of uh, opens up with a highlight reel of uh, the previous MCU movies. And Stanley is talking in the background and obviously it's meant to garner and or act actually manifest feelings of nostalgia within you because of course Stanley was a great ambassador for comics. Uh, in general, and of course, the, the Marvel comics and uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. And you really get to see what Marvel did well in these highlight reels, because you see a lot of characters that you never would have thought you would have fell, fallen in love with along the way. And this most notably Guardians of the Galaxy, but you see, you see a focus on pretty much all the characters. Uh, and there is even a fan reaction portion where they show a live fan audience's reaction to when Cap lifted Thor's hammer and said the famous Avengers Assemble uh, call. And it just really makes you miss the theaters because watching a movie like that in the theaters is such a different experience than watching it at home. It even warrants multiple viewings because a lot of the times if you watched a movie like Avengers Endgame in the theaters, you couldn't hear the dialogue because the fans were cheering so loud. So uh, that, that energy is something I really miss about the theater. So after all of the montage or the highlight montage of previous movies, you're really gonna get what's new and you're gonna get the, the announcement. So uh, you're, the first thing you're gonna see is Black Widow uh, being highlighted. And Black Widow is not a movie I'm, inc I'm incredibly excited for, but I know that there's gonna be some importance going forward. So Black Widow is cool. Uh, it sucks that we already got to see Natasha Romanoff die in Endgame and then see a solo movie late, like after the fact, but I'm sure it's gonna play some important role. Got Shang-Chi highlighted a little bit more and I loved the Shang-Chi Shang trailer and I'm sure I'm saying it wrong because Simeon, the actor, I forget his name, his full name, he mentioned how to say it. But then we get the first trailer, or I'm sorry, first images and or first clips, I should say, of the Eternals movie. And I think it looks pretty cool. Way more intriguing than what I thought it would look like. Um, but Chloe Zhao's coming off Best Director at the Academy Awards that no one watched. So that's exciting. And then we got stuff that we knew that was coming. Thor Love and Thunder, Spider-Man, and the big reveal, one of the big reveals, Wakanda Forever and the Marvels. So let's talk about that for just a second. You know, we got the other things going on. But first of all, as this montage is playing behind me or the clip is playing behind me, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, such a great title for this movie. I, I think it, it does a great job in getting you excited and hopeful about the future without T'Challa. So uh, I'm really excited for that. The Marvels is, a, is quite you know a curveball title because you would have thought they'd name it Captain Marvel and then subtitle uh, below or Captain Marvel 2, but it's the Marvel. So we're gonna get Monica Rambeau in there and then uh, Ms. Marvel, uh, the TV show's coming up, whose suit reveal was uh, leaked online. And the, the curious thing about, uh, about Ms. Marvel is that 
supposedly her elastic capabilities are changed from the comics and instead she's going to be having like uh, a bracelet that gives her somewhat like Green Lantern like powers according to Grace Randolph and that's a little upsetting as a Green Lantern uh, fan and DCU fan because they're beating DC to the punch in terms of powers there already they're already beating them to the punch with a movie like Eternals again we're gonna get into DC in just a second but yeah, really curveball title. I'm trying to see if I missed anything. We got Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and another big tease with Fantastic Four in there. And yeah, no release date for Fantastic Four, but overall, I thought this was a great teaser for the MCU and what's coming forward. Um, now, the reason why I wanna talk about it from a DCEU perspective is because while the MCU is over here giving fans what they want, really really giving the fans what they want and listening to their fans and they have a coherent plan we have Warner Brothers on the other side of things that is trying to copy them and falling more steps behind in the process so uh, we obviously have the restore the Snyderverse segment of the fans who are not being listened to because uh, we all know that and Sarnoff put out that article even before the Snyder Cut got a chance to really, uh, uh, really take take a hold of the narrative. And Sarnoff put out an article with one of the trades that said, "Oh yeah, we're moving forward. Zach finished his trilogy." And then we got all these numbers that were released that were obviously skewed to create a narrative. Now, what that's doing with the fan base is it's really getting the fan base to fall into that narrative uh, of being toxic because. Obviously fans are pissed, I understand that completely, and fans are now trashing the studio, demanding them they uh, restore the Snyderverse, but also completely trashing them along the way. And again, completely warranted and understandable from my uh, point of view, but um, just from the DCU perspective, it feels like we are just not being listened to, especially the, the Snyderverse uh, portion of the fans. And then you look at this and you're like, man, Marvel's doing such great things over there. Obviously, DC is has a good lineup going forward. They have, um, well, they have some exciting movies going forward. I don't want to call it a good lineup. But they have exciting movies like um, Black Adam coming, The Flash, you, uh, the Flash movie. It's, it's exciting, but at the same time, they are also using this whole multiverse thing to try and almost reboot uh, or erase some of what happened in the Snyderverse, or that's what it seems like. Uh, again, there's no way to tell right now, but that's what it seems like with the way they're, they're moving forward. Um, but in a way, the characters are continuing Ezra Miller, Ben Affleck's gonna be in it. So we don't know what's gonna come yet. And we also have Shazam 2, uh, then we got the Batman next year, which is kind of carrying the hype for DC on its shoulders for me. Now, because I am excited about other DC properties, but it just feels like they have no plan. And I've mentioned that in many videos before. Uh, again, so it, it hurts as a DC fan to look at the, what the MCU is doing, knowing that, man, they have such a great, they have such great IPs under their belt, and they're not doing nearly what they can do uh, to, to really get the mainstream audience on board with what they're doing, because the MCU is doing amazing things, especially on the TV side of things. I really enjoyed WandaVision. Uh, I wouldn't say it was great, but I really enjoyed it, but Falcon Winter Soldier really surprised me. I enjoyed that a lot. Uh, and they're just stepping things up. Now, I understand a lot of us on, on this channel are subscribers on this channel, are big DC fans. That's why I wanted to put out a video from our point of view. But I do see a lot of the conversation online. Uh, it's funny, I see uh, those, those, those fans that absolutely back DC no matter what. But I gotta say, uh, you know, with the comparison of the lineups, I think. I think Marvel's, MC, the MCU lineup is completely 100% uh, better than what DC has going forward because DC doesn't have any unified plan. They're throwing everything at the wall, seeing what sticks. It completely changes all the time. But there is one hope for DC, and that's DC fandom coming up in October. By then, I think Suicide Squad would have come out, and then they have Shazam and Black Adam to promote, and. Um, I'm forgetting if there's any because I'm going off the top of my head. But um, so there is that. There's there's potentially hope for, for DC to do something good. And again, if they are moving forward from the Snyderverse, they're leaving it in the past. Again, that's a, a likely reality, guys. I'm going to keep fighting for the Snyderverse. 
restore the Snyderverse. I'm going to keep hashtagging it. But if they are moving forward, what I need to see is a solid plan going forward, where they're going to take us. They need to tell us exactly where they're taking us. Um, we're hopefully going to learn more about the Flash and this grand plan that they supposedly have. And, um, they, you know, they're going to keep, if they keep trying to follow the MCU and imitate their game plan, then they're going to fail because Marvel's going to beat them to the punch every time. They prove it in the past. They just, there's so many steps ahead. So what WB has to do is forge their own plan, their own way forward. And that's what, that's why I enjoyed Snyder's vision. He had a different way forward, a different uh, path that he was trying to create, and I enjoyed it. Now, some of you may not have, so um, that's cool. You guys can all are all entitled to your own opinion, but I'm really curious to know uh, from you guys, one, what is your most anticipated MCU movie uh, for Phase 4? Drop it down in the comments below if you made it this far. And two, what are some things that DC can do outside of restoring the Snyderverse, because that's too easy. Outside of restoring the Snyderverse, what can DC do to get you back on board and basically their whole uh, momentum uh, moving forward again? What do you think that plan is? If you do have one, get creative, drop down in the comments below and uh, we'll highlight it in the next video. So thank you guys for watching. Please, if you did enjoy the video, give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.